Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. There's been absolutely no shortage of Zen 4 leaks and news stories that have been floating around the past couple of weeks or so. And as you probably gathered, today is no exception. An image online is actually detailing the CCD and I.O. configuration of a 16-core Epic Genoa processor. Now you can see in the middle here is the I.O. die and surrounding it are two CCDs. So each of these offer eight cores. Now we believe that the highest end configuration of this particular line of processors is up to 96 cores. I want to also give credit, by the way, to videocards.com for this discovery. I'll of course link their article in the video description. Furthermore, we also have a couple of additional images as well, one of them detailing the rear of the chip. And this is particularly interesting because we can see the ridiculous numbers of pins which are present. There's over 1,500 of them. For those wondering why there are so many, well, basically, it's really to do with uh, interconnectivity with DDR5, for example. We need additional pins to support that bandwidth and obviously all the PCIe devices and so on and so forth. This is another reason, of course, that they're shifting to the AM5 platform as well, because it does have additional pins there, which again is to support the fact that it's got, for example, DDR5 memory. While 96 cores does sound impressive for Epic, AMD will be even releasing 128 core parts as well. And when you think about this, it's quite bananas, to be honest with you, that we're already at this point where we've got 128 cores or 96 in the case of Epic uh, available for data centers. It seems that that came around pretty quickly, really, when you think like back in 2017, AMD just absolutely shocked the world when it was releasing, you know, uh, Naples, which of course was the first generation of its Epic processors, and that had 32 cores. So even with this 96 core variant, what we're going to see with Epic, we're looking at an increase of three times the number of cores in just a relatively short period of time. Switching to Camp NVIDIA, though, there have been an awful lot of announcements. We'll get to the GPU-specific cards in a moment, such as the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte, but perhaps too many people... The announcement of DLDSR, amongst other things, is perhaps more exciting. So there's going to be new GeForce drivers which are available to the public on the um, 14th of January, so we don't have to wait too long, it's just a few days from now as of the time I'm recording this video. So I'm sure many of you remember that uh, AMD have announced RSR. And basically, RSR is Radeon Super Resolution, which is basically a driver-level implementation of FSR. And this is quite similar to what NVIDIA had already done with NIS, which again was a driver-level implementation of upsampling, but is not the same thing, of course, as DLSS. So, obviously, the two companies are currently in a game of one-upmanship, which, in my opinion, is always a good thing. But now, NVIDIA have released a statement which basically highlights several very cool new features which are going to be implemented in the drivers. The first, and uh, perhaps more interesting to a lot of people who have like lower resolution or high refresh rate monitors, is Deep Learning Dynamic Super Resolution Technology, or to its friends and buddies, DLDSR. Now, most of you are familiar at this point with DLSS, which is Deep Learning Super Sampling, which takes a lower resolution image and then basically uses machine learning to upsample to a higher resolution uh, image. It uses essentially trained code to do that. So it uses temporal information as well as a neural network. So basically, it can look at the previous couple of frames of animation as well as the current frame to basically infer, or should I say paint in, quote-unquote, additional pixel details. And it's pretty cool, and it does a fairly good job. Um, Intel, of course, are going to be releasing their own version of this, uh, XESS as well. So this is rather different, though, to what we're seeing here. DLDSR, that's going to be a bit of a clumsy acronym, isn't it? <laughs> what it does instead is actually downscale. Many people are probably familiar with a feature that's actually embedded in uh, NVIDIA drivers, and also AMD drivers as well, might I add, known as DSR. 
or dynamic super resolution. What this allows you to do is let's just for sake of discussion say that your monitor's native resolution is 1440p, high refresh rate, but let's also make the assumption that you are running a fairly powerful card or maybe you're even running an older game. The game that we're seeing here of course is Prey. Well what you can do is run the game internally at a higher resolution and then it will downsample it's basically like, um, I suppose the best, a really good way to describe it is it's basically like an ultra cool version of, uh, well, anti-aliasing. And obviously this means that the visual quality is going to be considerably better. So what NVIDIA are doing here is they're uh, throwing uh, deep learning into the mix. So as you can see here with the demo of Prey, for example, with the native resolution, which again is 1080p, we're looking at basically the same frame rate as DLDSR. I'm going to just, for the sake of my sanity, call it DL for the rest of this video so that I don't go nuts. But basically, essentially, you have performance parity there, whereas DSR, um, which is increasing uh, the native resolution to 4K and then downsampling to 1080p, you can see that there's an absolutely massive performance hit. And basically, um, here it's essentially running about 2.25 times the pixel density, but they're basically using, again, a neural network. It's pretty cool stuff. I'll wait, of course, until that there's uh, availability. As of the time I'm recording this, there doesn't seem to be early access slash press driver, which is kind of making me sad because I actually want to play around with this driver. Not least of which, because there's a plethora of other cool things that this driver can do. Basically, NVIDIA have teamed up with a very popular tool called Reshade. I'm sure many of you hardcore PC gamers know about this. Actually, let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of Reshade, if you've used it. And basically, this allows you to mess around with several new freestyle, fi uh, um, freestyle filters I got there in the end. One of those is SSRTGI, or Screen Space Ray Traced Global Illumination. And many, of course, are familiar with this with re uh, ray tracing reshade filters. Actually, a lot of this stuff has been pretty popular, injecting it into a number of games and also emulators as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this actually comes about in modern day games and see how flexible it actually is. There's also SSAO as well, or Screen Space Ambient Occlusion and Dynamic Depth of Field. So yeah, I mean, the, the crux of the matter is with this driver update, um, in theory anyway, older titles, let's say from, you know, 2017 2018 especially if you have an rtx card and by the way just to emphasize you do need an rtx card so whether that's an rtx 20 or 30 series card you're good to go you basically can kind of remaster the games for lack of a better term and this would also to my mind be super interesting for games like final fantasy 7 the pc version um Maybe I'll kind of do a bit of investigation on this, depending on how well it goes, because, <laughs> yeah, the PC version, <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was, it was bad. Um, there are actually just, just so you guys know, if you do have Final Fantasy VII on the PC, this is a complete tangent before we get into the final bit of news um, for NVIDIA. There is actually a number of fan-made patches now. One of them actually disables dynamic uh, resolution scaling, which makes me a happy camper. So that's always good. I have tested it out rather briefly, and it does seem to work quite well. I think there's actually a couple of versions of it. Um, you can just do a quick Google of it. I think it's, you know, in the normal places and it's pretty easy to install. It's literally uh, one of them, for example, is just you just drag a file into a folder. It's quite simple. Uh, but I'm just letting you guys know about that. And yeah, just rounding out the RTX news or NVIDIA news, we also have now the embargo lifted of the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte cards. I'll get into the specs in just a moment, but it's kind of a weird one this because basically, um, yeah, the embargo is basically lifted. However, there is no technically press driver. So I'm sure most of you know about this anyway, but generally cards get shipped to you know reviewers 
and then we also get access on like specific um like websites basically you know logins you get to download the press driver or it's given to you other means like amd nvidia um intel they all kind of operate like this it's pretty standard but for some reason the 3080 12 gigabyte cards we well yeah the driver just wasn't available basically and um yeah, it, it's kind of an it's kind of a weird launch. There were some rumors uh, that it was originally going to be at CES, but it was announced a little bit late. So it's kind of a weird one. The thirty ninety Ti and the thirty fifty, everyone knows about that at this point. Although the cards, of course, are not uh, ready to launch yet. So the only card that we were uncertain about was the thirty eighty twelve gigabyte. I've gone over the specifications like a trillion times at this point, guys. So I'll go over this really quickly. Uh, basically, it is eight thousand nine hundred and sixty uh cuda core so that's slight increase over the uh, rtx 3080 10 gigabyte um which is uh, 8704 so rt cores go up slightly as well so 68 to 70 as you would expect this is also naturally increasing the number of tensor cores and tmus base frequency seems pretty much identical uh depending on the aib variant the major difference of course as you guys probably know at this point is that the memory bandwidth is up because the bus is wider it's 384 bit and of course you've got an extra two gigabytes of memory and this means that we also have a slightly higher tdp uh, 350 watts furthermore to all of this the uh price is not <laughs> well it's kind of a weird one like it's already on sale on multiple uh, vendors and as of the time i'm recording this video you know prices are all over the place and obviously msrp is a thing anyway but yeah we essentially at this point know that these cards are going to be a little more expensive than the 308010 and that's you know the problem because prices at the moment are still really up in the air I can't give you an exact price at the moment because as of the time I'm recording this anyway, retail prices are just all over the shop. So it's kind of weird. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in regards to the 3080. Is it going to become end of line? I had heard that there might be the case that the 3080 12 gigabyte does become, you know, dominant and the 3080 10 gigabyte becomes end of line. I honestly don't know. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that occurs because, well, yeah, that would be kind of odd. Although, also, it would kind of make sense because, obviously, that core at this point, you know, GA102, is being used in, like, a billion different things. I mean, what is it? The 3090 Ti uses it, the 3090, the 3080 Ti, the 30. 80, 12, and also 10 all use the same core, albeit variants thereof and obviously different specifications. So it's kind of a weird one, but um, that's where we are. Anyway, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, then of course you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video and also of course subscribe to the channel for much more content. Apologies for not being on camera for this video. It's kind of like a bitsy day for me. I'm finishing off a couple of projects dealing with like tons of admin and emails and yeah just stuff. So it's been kind of a, a bit of a weird one honestly i wasn't originally intending to record a video but then all of these announcements happened i was like oh okay then <laughs> i guess i am with that said thanks very much for checking out the video and of course supporting the channel take care of yourselves guys have an amazing day bye for now